There it is. <laughs> Welcome to the PFO channel. I'm Jim. Well, I spent enough time with my grinder and my reciprocating saw cutting the outriggers off of that old travel trailer frame out there, which by the way, if you haven't seen that other video, I bought a reclaimed travel trailer frame. I plan on modifying that trailer to turn it into a sawmill trailer for our portable sawmill. And I've already cut the outriggers off using a grinder and a reciprocating saw. And after cutting all those off, I realized, no, I need a better way of cutting metal for this project, or I'm going to go through a lot of blades and a lot of grinding wheels and uh, a lot of time. And I've got a lot more cutting ahead of me because also in that last video, if you haven't seen it, check out the playlist. I got deep enough into the planning stage to know that I need to chop a section out of every one of those cross members and bring the frame rails in narrower so that they match the width of the rails on the sawmill. So I did some research into plasma cutters and then I got on Amazon and ordered one. And I can't wait to get into this box and have a look at it. I have never touched a plasma cutter before. I already have an air compressor that I think will be up to the task. It's a 27 gallon, five horsepower, 8.2 CFM at, can't read it from here. Uh, okay, I just failed my eye test. And I've got the plenty of uh, 120 and 240 outlets around the shop here. So I should be able to make this thing work, right? So let's crack into this and see what it's all about. Closer to the end of this video, I'll go over two important features that caused me to choose this particular plasma cutter over all the other ones available on Amazon. They're features that I had seen mentioned in some of the listings, but I had no idea what they meant. After studying up on it, I realized that if I'd have bought a unit without these features, I would have regretted it. They're that important, so stick around to the end. You don't want to miss that. Instructions, bits and pieces. Got the air hose. That's the adapter to go from the 120 to the 240. This is the, it's the grounding clamp. And there's the torch. And there's the plasma cutter itself. It's morning, supply pressure should be 35 to 45 at 110 volts and 45 to 60 at 220 volts. So that air compressor looks like it'll be well suited to this. All right, I think the, I was gonna just start plugging things in, but I think the next most prudent thing to do here would be to crack open the instructions. These are all the safeties and cautions. I'll read all those safety things. I'm just not going to bore you with watching me read them. On the back here, you can see it's got the push to connect to attach the air hose. And that's the typical combination pressure regulator and air filter and uh, condensation trap. It has a push to connect on here, but it doesn't have one on here. So I will have to come up with that somewhere. So I'll need a female pipe thread to whatever this barb size is. Yeah, that's a quarter inch NPT air connector. This is my clamp, grounding clamp. You see the little indexing nub that's at the 12 clock position right there. That has to go into the matching notch, which is on the six o'clock position on the front of the machine. Quarter turn and it's tight. Okay, so this one, this has got two pins and a notch and that goes into the Two pin connector there. Looks like this ring connector is going to go 
onto this. Okay, there's two washers. So I'm going to put that under a washer and over a washer. That's the arc start. It's labeled. And then the torch has a rubber cap and that is threaded. So that must be where the air comes through. Oh yeah. Yeah, that looks like it's a hit. the air and a ground is probably over here. So this is our hot. This is the ground and the air. Put this on there. It's just a push fit. Now I'm going to go look in my stash of air fittings. I think I've got a barb over there. Well, I scrounged around on all my stuff and I found a barb that looks like it's going to fit this thing. Yeah, it's a quarter inch. This has some printing on it. What size does it actually say it is? 10 by six and a half millimeter. So six and a half is quarter inch, basically the inside diameter. Well, 6.35 millimeters would be a quarter inch, but six and a half is close enough. So this quarter inch barb will work in that. I just, I don't like having hose clamps hanging out. I'm always catching a finger on them, but I guess that's what I need to do. And I've got, so I've got the quarter inch barb will fit in there. And I've got a, a coupler. Oh, I'm hearing some thunder. Hopefully that's not too loud on the microphone here. And this is the piece that came with it. And you know what? That's interesting. That's got an O-ring on it. You know what? Look at this over here. This piece, this is the push to connect fitting where that could go in. So this is one way I could rig this up. And that would give me, what do we got? I'm guessing this is about 10 feet of hose here. So I could put that in there and rig this up and have my air hose there. But the other thing I could do is take this off and put this on there. And then my air hose would connect directly to the back of the machine here. What would be the downside of that? I don't know that there would be a downside of that. Let me, let me see if that readily comes out of there. It, it must. And that's why this has an O-ring on it. If this thing was intended to go into something like this for the other end of that, it wouldn't have an O-ring on it, would it? So if I take this 10 foot hose out of the pitcher, then the air hose goes right to there. I kind of like how that looks right there. That air hose isn't particularly cumbersome. It doesn't negatively affect the flexibility of being able to move this thing around. I believe this is much less prone to kinking than the clear hose. All right, so I think this is about ready to test here. And I think I want to start off on 120 volt outlet. There's a 20 amp right there. Got to get this protector sleeve off of these prongs and put this adapter in there. 
don't care a stiff fit. Ooh, hope I'll be able to get that back off when the time comes. Ooh, yeah, it's a nice tight fit though. All right. I'm going to slide down a little bit here. Make sure this is in the off position. Okay, that's plugged in. I need to pump up my air compressor too. Man, I hate the noise of that thing. And while that's building up some pressure, I'll take another look at some of these instructions. The back turns it on. Yeah. 69 PSI. Probably want to turn that down a little teeny bit. Push to lock, okay. Sixty-two, fifty-seven. 56, so the pressure regulator is working just fine. It detects the 110 volts automatically. I wonder if there's anything in here that says anything about the uh, thickness of metal and what you ought to be cutting to. I probably ought to read up on all this, shouldn't I? Yeah, this, this main dial in here, that dials your amps and max out at 110 volts, max amps is 35. Oh, 4T is up here. I don't think I want 4T steps mode. I want 2T on that. That's just push and hold. The 4T, that's push the trigger to start it and then push it again to stop it. That would be like for a CNC plasma cutting table where your hands off. So I want 2T, I want to stop when I let off the trigger. Conversion for, okay, metric or standard PSI or megapascals. Oh, and the operating temperature gets too high, it'll say E3 and shut off. Post flow, okay, post flow, five seconds. I want it, I'm gonna set that on 10 seconds. Okay, well, I need a piece of metal to give this a shot and here's my grounding clamp now if anybody can recognize what this piece of metal is leave me a comment below get my tint on here All right let's strike an arc and this is, yes, it is still recording. I can't, it's weird. I got my green glasses on and I cannot see the red record over on the side of this. Interesting. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And these tints are good because I don't have a blind spot in front of my eyes right now. Oh man, that is cool. All right, there you have it. Look at that. I made a double cut there. That's an awful cut. This is a nice little unit. It seems to be well made. This is the first cut I've ever made with a plasma cutter. I've uh, done a lot of cutting torch work before. I was probably 14 or 15 when I started cutting apart old cars with my dad using a cutting torch. And uh, that's no fun. He would have he would have just flipped over something like this. This is not a sponsored video. I bought this with my own money. I haven't received any free merchandise or any payment. This is not a paid promotion. I am an Amazon associate, but I don't ever put links in my videos to something that I don't like. I like this. I'm happy with this purchase. So if you choose to use the link that I place in the description below this video, 
I may earn a small commission, but there's no added cost to you. It's got quite a strong cooling fan in there too. It's maybe a total of an hour of time elapsed since I pulled this out of the box. It took me a little bit of time to hunt down the fitting to get the air hose hooked up. Then I plugged it in, fired it up, scanned through the instructions and figured the whole thing out and cut metal. I mean, what more can you ask for than that? And just really quickly, the reasons I chose this one, basically two reasons. It's a pilot arc design. And what that means is you don't have to have clean metal to strike an arc. You can actually, allegedly, I haven't tried this yet, but you can strike an arc through paint or rust. I don't know how much paint is actually left on that travel trailer frame, but there certainly is a lot of rust on it. So I'm glad that I discovered that the pilot arc is the one that will strike an arc on dirty metal or painted metal or rusty metal. If I didn't have the pilot arc, I would have to do a lot of grinding in order to start all my cuts out there. Uh, the other thing that was important to me anyway is that this is a non-high frequency pilot. Now my understanding of the difference between the high frequency and the non-high frequency is that the high frequency emits EMF which could cause interference with sensitive electronics nearby. You might think, well I'll just stay away from sensitive electronics. I don't have sensitive electronics in the cutting area of my workshop. Well, what about this? I'll guarantee there's a printed circuit board in there and it probably has a microchip on it. This basically has its own onboard computer and you can only get so far away from it. So just giving some distance to the sensitive electronics is kind of hard when you're tied to it by a piece of hose. So uh, not only that, but if you ever intend to hook one of these up to a CNC cutting table, the electronics on the cutting table are also in the category of sensitive electronics. And so the non-high frequency is preferred or required, I would say, for plasma cutting on a CNC table. So this has both the pilot arc feature and the non-high frequency. So that's why I chose this one. Fortunately, I was able to learn those things before I bought one and learned it the hard way and thought, oh, I wish I'd have got the other one. So if you're also in the market, if those things are important to you, well, there's, you know a little bit more than I did at that point. So maybe this is helpful. Hey, if you've watched the video this far, go ahead and hit that like button. You'd be amazed at how much that helps the channel. Thanks a lot for watching. PFO Channel out.